you had a duty, I think in those days, of 65% of the state water capacity, if you imported a capacitor, which is huge. So you couldn't import a capacitor. And in a way, we were protected by 65% uh, in a manner of thinking. We know that at some stage this was going to go down to zero over many years, of course. But as every year this would happen, the prices would come down. And here was an industry that's used to prices going up every year. So while the costs go up, the prices go up, and life goes on. But now that is all going to change. So he began to think of uh, what would the future hold. Or the, the other option was he was getting more to send it off. So anyway, the personal story was that I was doing my own thing in hotels. I'm a hotel manager by profession, by qualification. And so is my wife. So we met in the hotels, we fell in love, we got married, we had nothing to do with this capacity business. Till one day, my father in law came to me and said, You know, this is my situation. You know, you are a young guy with some energy, you want to do something with this. You why don't you come and take a look at it? And I really don't know today why I would say yes to something like this. Because I'm very passionate about what I was doing. I was a very young general manager at 28. Uh, and uh, I was doing what I thought very well in the hotels. Uh, everything looked fine. But as you say, okay, things happen, happen still, or whatever the word is. It happened. When I came into Deki, uh, I began to see a company that was, in my opinion, so that maybe it was my hotel background, we only exist for our guests, as we call it. And I was trained as a professor writing on the board all the time. The guest is always right. And I never understood as a teenager why somebody can always be right, even if he's the guest. So we had this very interesting discussion within the class. But what it did to me, and I didn't realize, was that I became extremely customer oriented. And I said, any business must exist only for its customers. If my capacitors don't satisfy the customers, I have no business to exist in the first place. But fortunately, the hotels that made it very clear to me, I didn't realize that somebody in the manufacturing could completely think otherwise. You know, I, I could imagine that some people don't think that way, but here when I came to the company, this was one of the better companies out of the three that existed at that point. We had a better reputation. Uh, before coming to the company, I went to Bangalore. I was already in Bangalore. I met one of our customers, which used to be BPL in those days. And my first discussion about the business, without knowing what our capacity looked like, was to go to one of the customers in BPL and ask him, uh, how do you feel about this company? I get a view from him, and he was very nice and polite. He said, it's a great company, it's for him. And I said, but sorry, but that doesn't answer my question. Because I've come to look for things that I can improve, that I can change, uh, that need change in the first place. So I decided to dig deeper. And typically, you'll find most companies. On the top, people like us all get very nice, polite, but useless, you know, at the end of the day. So you need to dig deeper in any, every company if you want to get the real answers. And so we dug deeper, and I went to the project, and I said, how can I make life, your, your life easier? He said, oh, you're the guy I'm looking for because your company doesn't pick up the phone. They don't give me uh, capacitors I want. He said, here's a recent case. I want 32 capacitors for my television. I ordered for 1,000 televisions. That's it. Again, the figures now. So I need 32,000 capacitors. You guys are so smart. They sent me 28, but they don't send me four pieces. So those 4,000 I'm still waiting for. Till they don't come, I can't make the deal. I said, so why would they do that? He said, I don't know. I'm calling them. They don't answer. I said, OK, I'm there tomorrow. And I'm joining tomorrow. This is the first thing I would do is ask And I'll come back. Long story short, when I was there in the company, I figured what a capacitor would like. And I asked uh, my marketing guy, and I said, I believe this is what is happening with BPL. What is the story? So he said, Oh, that we do deliberately. What do you mean you do deliberately? He said, If we give them all 32, we won't pay for it. So we give them 28 or 30 or whatever. Keep two or three with us always. That's standard operating procedure. When he pays for those 28, we send these three and then we get all the money. Because then he can't run out of the small amount. So he said, what do you think? What happens if you give all the money? He said, you won't pay. I said, why don't you then? Don't give him the next one, but have this done. He said, that you have to go and speak to your father. Because that is the rule you say. So I'm just trying to give you a flavor of what was happening from a government policy perspective. And how was, and this was a good company. So make no mistake, I'm not uh, saying that Deki was a bad company. Out of the three, they were shining. But that was the attitude of the company. So anyway, I got into my job and uh, we decided to make a big difference. We were 40 people at that stage, uh, four winding machines, and we had a, a license to make 10 million pieces a year. From that situation, today we make uh, 4 million pieces a day. So that's quite a few more to go. We are 600 people, as I said, in India and 300 in China. Uh, we are India's largest. Manufacturer, we make more than Philips and Siemens together in this country. Of course, they do a lot for export. Uh, 
uh, there are different names that I've seen in the name of the of course. Uh, it's a global capacitor we sell all over the world. Um, we are a well-known brand. But the journey and what we've been able to do, I will try to share a little bit of that uh, with you. Uh, how that happened and still what is the struggle and what you want to do. And hopefully that will give you a few principles or things that you want to pick up from there. Interesting? Is that a good way to spend your morning? We make something called film capacitors. So, yeah, for those who want Yeah, we make two whole, not the SMD version. Because what I've
is the first word that comes to your mind when you hear this word? When I say competitiveness, what is there is a prefix that comes to your mind. What would that be? Fierce. Advantage. Fierce. I heard the word cost. So when we say competitive, when I ask him, uh, is, ask me, is Indian uh, capacity or component manufacturing company, are they competitive? If that is your question. My assumption is that you're asking are we cost competitive? So my answer would be normally yes and no, depending on who you compare with. But if you say no, just tell me globally are you competitive or not, the answer is most products and services in India would be in cost. Because again, we are looking at it from a cost perspective. Especially in the manufacturing business, it be a no because uh, cost. We are always looking at competitiveness from a cost perspective. Yes? Do you agree with me? Yeah. What about quality? Yeah, I'll come to that. We say, so I ask you, you know, uh, you bought something at uh, we are is this pen company cost competent? They probably are because they sell hundreds of thousands of these. For what? For the same quality that I want. I'm not comparing the cost of this with a with a ballpoint pen which is five piece. So when I show you a product or a specification, you already assume that the quality. So quality is a big assumption today. You know, most products in the market are not failing you on quality, and if they are, they won't stay for too long. Yeah. So within given that specification or that range, we are looking at cost competitiveness. And when we look at cost competitiveness, one of the big problems I have with cost competitiveness is compared to who? Because I get obsessed with this one word. And that is defined by my competition. Yeah. So I'm running my cost competitive business based on what my competitors are doing. This bottle of water is very good for 15 or 20 rupees or whatever it costs because there's somebody else who's also selling it for around the same price. Yeah. Somebody starts selling this for 5 rupees, these guys will not be cost competitive. And the fact is the water costs less than 5 rupees is really the bottle. Yes. So, when we are in the cost competitive world, and most businesses are in the cost competitive world, let's make no mistake. You are right, quality, but uh, you know, within those parameters, we are talking of. So, I am not going to compare distillery with a pouch of water being sold in a street in Varanasi, for example. I am comparing it with any other bottled water that I can buy off the shelf, which will look similar, the bottle strength is similar, etc., etc. The plastic is not recycled, it doesn't smell, the water is clean and safe. I am looking at the same parameters. So that is the that is how normally all businesses are run, including my business of capacitors. But the moment we when we continue to run a business in this form, what is the problem with this kind of what goes wrong with this kind of business? You are not secure. There's a lot of insecurity. If somebody in the world finds a cheaper way of making this bottle, I bought a business, or it will start affecting my business. So it's what I call, it's a bottomless hole. Every day I go to work and I, one of my marketing guys tell me, you know, it's a one rupee, now somebody's selling this for 98 by say I My customer Philips called me this morning and they said, you need to do something about your price because these Chinese, yesterday the whole delegation had come and they told me that one is too expensive, I can give it for 90 by <coughs> So this is a bottomless hole. Every day your exercise is, how can I make it cheaper? And this is right because as consumers, we are also enjoying the benefits of this. Yeah. So when you guys were born or growing up, you would find these large televisions very weighty. So by weight they were they were okay. But if you look at the quality of that television compared to what you buy today, the features that the television has, the fact that you can record something, replay it tomorrow, you can put in a USB, you can transmit it, you can use internet on the same TV, all that for maybe half the price or the same price from an inflation index price. <coughs> Of what you were getting 20 years ago. So there are a lot of people who are working very hard to make things cheaper and better. So we are also, when we are on the other side, at the supply side, we face the same issue. But as you rightly said, we are insecure and it's not. So there is there another way of doing business? And that is what I ask my people to in the company to. And for a minute, if we reverse this whole logic and say, let's look at ourselves as consumers, as people who are buying things. So you're wearing this nice shirt, but I'm sure you didn't buy it because it was the cheapest to buy. I'm not. Using this pen, it's not the cheapest, there are many cheaper pens. So, why do I buy something more expensive? As a consumer, can you think of anything you bought because it was the cheapest? Sorry, not because of that. You, won't, you don't buy because of cost. You buy because of what? Why do you buy? 
Yeah, I hear the word quality, but is there a bigger word? Utility. Utility. Yeah. I agree with the word utility. Uh, value. Because it, it encompasses exactly what you're saying. It's not just quality. Let me give you an example. Uh, you are driving down uh, from work and your wife or your spouse calls you and says, we need some crossing uh, crossing at home because the kid is not well. Now, so what is the value of my, so I stop by in my car and I go to the closest pharmacy and I tell him, give me a strip of crossing. And he said, uh, you know, yes, I had crossing, but crossing was for 10 rupees for 10 tablets. But I also have something which is uh, called Drosin, manufactured by other company, who just brought it and they are selling it for 5 rupees. Would you like that? I said, no, no, don't waste for 10 rupees. Because for me, Rosin represents the value of something I've used and I'm familiar with, and I don't want to take any chances with my kids' health. So I'll buy it. Right. Or this one is shut, and there is somebody next to me. And I go to him, and he says, It's late in the night. He says, I'll give it you 50 rupees. So I say, Yeah, but isn't the regular price 10 rupees? Sorry, this is the price at the moment. It's 50 rupees. Or don't take it. So I take 50 rupees at that point of time. And I probably am not, at least he says I'm open at 12 in the night, you know, uh, you need this tablet at the moment, so the value goes up. So it's not only quality, because quality is shown by the brand for me. I assume grocery means quality, whoever makes it. But also there is a delivery angle, a logistics angle. I get it when I want. If he says you go home and I will have it sent to you tomorrow morning for 2 rupees, I'm not interested. Yeah, so the whole uh, Domino's pizza is based on that delivery model. It's not the best pizza in the world. It's not the cheapest. But it comes when you're hungry, so and it comes with time with that short delivery. And that is what we have really find. So the value extends to far more than just quality or delivery. It could mean the design. I like the design of the shirt. I like the way the color is done, for example. Or it could mean uh, let's buy a Maruti because the parents will tell you, because those are the ones with the largest number of service centers. So the after sales service becomes a very important reason why I'm this. So we don't know why we buy things in this order, but inherently we all have the capacity to decide for ourselves what is the best value for me. And still I don't buy the most expensive car because I cannot afford it. So it's value with some cost in my mind. Value with my uh, with the sacrifice I make and I'll come in more details with that model. So there is value. And the interesting thing about value is who decides value? Consumer. The consumer decides value. So if I want to play the value competitor in this game, the good thing is I have to be obsessed with this one person called the customer. How does the customer use my shirt? And I say, oh, he also, he wears it to the office, but he also goes for parties sometimes wearing a shirt, but he also gets married sometimes. And I might say, you know what, as a designer I'm going to open a shirt which is only for wedding. Only on the most important day or whatever of your life you're going to use that shirt. So I'm going to make it exclusive, very upmarket, very customized, you put your name on it, I don't know. So the moment I see how consumers use a product, I can decide what value proposition should I sell. And that is very interesting because now I start spending my life as a company more with the customer rather than in the first case where I was spending it with the company. But, of course, it's a nice, uh, nice vision of what you should be doing. In practice, whenever you will listen to your customer very well, and pay attention to what he's saying and absorb that, that listening and convert it into a product or a service in your company and take it to the market. This guy is listening to the board. He says, What is happening to you? Oh, Nike has now started giving capacitors in a kit form. That's what we did when I joined the company. So we said, A customer, if you want 32, you give me your model number, you tell me you want these 32 capacitors, you will get 32 multiples of 32. You will not get 31 ever. So that when you get them, you can use them. No discussion. If you don't pay me for those 32, you never get capacitors again. Because that was a real problem in those days. So you solve the problem then. So we started something called kit supplies and components. In those days it was considered new. What happens? The other two guys and everybody else who's trying to get into the Indian market recognizes that. And all those guys say, we also offer kits. They don't call it kits, they call it something else. So when you create value, because I listen to the customer behavior, I created value. 
obviously I will still do it at some cost. I cannot charge you too much more. I can charge you incrementally more. It's nice. But the competitor will also listen to that and he will create the same value. So if I have a smart progressive company, so you say, it is an impressive company. What is impressive for us? I think one of the facts is that we are continuously doing this. We are continuously listening to the customer creating the next set of value. And in every field we know there are companies that are doing this. But we need to decide as a company, as an entrepreneur, as an employee, whether we want to play this game every day of our lives, which means that we are changing someone. We come, get a mail saying the price has gone down, now you need to make a cheaper product. Or sell at a loss. Or sell at a low profit. Or we come every day and we say, you know what? Yesterday I saw somebody using my refrigerator at his home and I know. So I was uh, helping uh, one of the brands with their designs of the refrigerator. And I said, tell me, how many times have your engineers gone to a home after they have bought your home? And there was nobody who's, who's raised hand. So they do a lot of design elements, 50 engineers are designing a refrigerator. But once somebody has made the mistake of buying their refrigerator and putting it in their house, nobody comes to see how the housewife is using it. You design that the bottle should go here, you design that the vegetable should go here. You design that the meat should come in. So this was many years ago. Now, if you see in a normal refrigerator even in the world, what do you have? You have the freezer right in the top. Right? Yes? What do we put in the freezer? And my raw material cost is about 50 rupees. 
48 rupees to be precise in this case, which means the value addition is 50 or 52 percent, which is a fantastic product to make, which means that I have enough room to do things with it, right? Now, what, I, what do I do in this example is that, why do I sell it for 100 rupees? Is because I'm trying to sell it to a neighbor in India, another factory in India who's making a finished, for example, making some lighting with my capacitors. And he says, you know, sorry, you are, you are, you quoted 120, but that's too expensive. If you want to do business with me, here is a guy quoting 100 rupees from China. That is my landed cost from China. All I can do is I can give you 100. I cannot give you anything more. So actually the competition has decided my price of 100 rupees, right? And what I've done here, there are some very simple elements on my profit and loss scale on any companies. And I've tried to just put them as a percentage. So you will